here we go. Problems then for Robert Jan Dirksen. Yeah, the lead up is minus 10 stood on the tee, but that does not look good. There he is, uh, top of the leaderboard. That may not last too long. Could be the sort of place where you walk down and you think, actually, I might not want to find my ball down here. Well, it depends uh, whether he's hit a provisional and uh, where that is, I, uh, I guess. Now, the way he's looking, no one's seen exactly where the ball's gone, that's obvious, because, uh, you know, it, the search is not centering on a single spot. It's a general search. This is uh, gone up and over a hill, so you have no idea where it's actually pitched. Yeah. This is a really bad fortune for uh, Dirksen. He would have been thinking, stood on the tee about a birdie. In a 543-yard par five, it's not a particularly difficult hole. Just get the ball in play and then hit it again. That's it. It looks like time's up. He hit a provisional. Well, I think that Dirksen uh, may have hit a provisional, and now he's looking for it. This is uh, disastrous. Now he's got five minutes to look for for his ball. That starts when he begins looking for it. As soon it? as yeah, or or even if if you. The one thing that you don't do is send your caddy ahead because if your caddy starts looking for it, he's part of your side, and that's when All the five right. minutes would start. Well, just to repeat, they are looking for the uh, provisional. And I would assume that um, when Robert hit the provisional, his mind was a little bit of a, a blur, and he's really forgotten exactly where it went because he he's got no idea well and the other thing is he's gone forward to look for his first ball and maybe he's, he's left his second one there and somebody may have picked it up well that's true as well yeah now this is uh, starting to take on nightmare proportions there's uh, David Parking referee on the uh, Asian tour. I think they're talking about the fact that somebody could have picked the ball up, yeah. as we mentioned there, Steve. Well, it, you, you can understand why she might have picked them up, because she probably looked around, didn't see anyone. Everyone was on the other side of the fairway looking. I thought, well, I found a ball. Could be a possibility, but... I think, I think they picked it up. I can't. If you ask me, because walking, but... the ball was coming this way, I mean, it was very difficult to reel it. I mean, it's difficult to listen. Uh -huh. I'm walking, All right. Uh, I know you've taken uh, exams on the rules. Well, no, not yet. <laughs> well, all right, then. Here's uh, question number 4A. What happens if um, he's hit a provisional, he believes and he's given to believe that it's been picked up, what, what happens then? Well, the ruling would be, you know, they have to try and identify the, the fact that the ball was in a particular place and, and find the person who had picked the ball up. And then they would bring that person back and say this was approximately where the ball was and they would replace the ball, not drop it with no penalty. All right. 
I'm hearing that one of the caddies who went forward said they saw the ball in this particular area. So obviously, David Parkin has gone forward to try and find the, well, the particular person. I was going to ask you, if they can't find the ball and they can't find the, the lady who, who they suspect picked the ball up, then what happens? Well, I think the situation was, you know, they, they would confer with the caddies and say, look, was there a ball here? Did you see uh, his provisional ball in this area? I think this is why they're so casual here at the moment. They're not, it's not as if they're searching vigorously to try and find a ball which obviously isn't here in the place where you, you shouldn't really be losing a golf ball yeah so i would imagine that, that they're going to say to the the caddy where was the ball well here comes david parking Sounds like a case for John Paramore. Well, David Parkin is a is a very experienced referee. And yeah, he is. Why is she searching there? Then? I don't know. Meanwhile, I either need you or Mr. Kim or Mr. Jang to come to fairway four right now. No, he was calling for uh, Korean referees. Maybe the spectator only speaks Korean. There is a slight language problem. Yeah, there's a ball spotter. Mr. Lee, is someone trying to fall now? Sorry, say again. Robert's looking a little more concerned now. And his problems might just be beginning. Robert Jan Dirksen, the, the leader of the Ballantyne's Championship, has real problems on the fourth. Now, his provisional ball, they haven't found it. They are assuming from the evidence gathered from the caddies, etc., etc., that it's uh, landed just about there. So he's going to be playing eventually. Four? Yes, it'll be his fourth shot. This was where his provisional ball was pertained to had finished. Yeah. So uh, the... Uh, that ball is, is nearer, so he's going to place it down. So, like you say, he's played his three off the tee. This will be his fourth shot from here, so a good break. It is. Uh, I mean, Robert Yandersen's done nothing wrong. I mean, they were overlooking for his first ball. Somebody whipped the second ball. It's not his fault. And, uh, he's uh, behaved exactly according to the rules. And they say he's, he's got a little bit of a break. If he makes six uh, or seven even, it's, um, he's done well. Just trying to get this one back into play. And hit a low hook, get this one scuttling. Has missed the fairway. You see, now some people say to me they love watching the pros not get the job done and struggle. How are you stand on that? Oh, well, these guys are good, to uh, borrow a phrase, and uh, I love watching any example of them being good. Don't think that's a that's a very British thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, wanting to watch someone fail, wanted to to watch someone prove they're human. They're all human, but um, they are exceptionally good. There you are, there's uh, Robert Jan Dirksen's record, 35. 